and welcome to Afrotainment. How can you adequately describe someone like Colonel Muammar Gaddafi? During a period that spanned six decades, the Libyan leader paraded on the world stage with a style so unique and unpredictable that the words maverick or eccentric scarcely did him justice. Gaddafi developed his own political philosophy, writing a book so influential that it eclipsed Plato's and Karl Marx's own theories. He spent his life reinventing himself and his revolution. That one Arab commentator called him the Picasso of Middle East politics. Despite how the Western media painted him, Gaddafi chalked numerous significant successes until he was murdered in the year 2011. After over four decades in power since he overthrew King Idris I in 1951. On what was termed as the first bloodless military coup in Africa, here are 10 things you never knew about this man, Gaddafi. This is your one and only Afrotainer. Kindly hit the subscribe button below to help this Pan African channel grow. Number 10. All Libyan banks were state owned. The Libyan Central Bank was one of the few banks that was not controlled by international bankers. This meant there was no any interest rates on loans since all the Libyan banks were state-owned. As if that is not enough, a portion of Libyan oil sale was credited directly to the bank accounts of all Libyan citizens and the price of petrol for Libyans was as low as 0.14 USD per litre. Gaddafi also had plans for the creation of the African Investment Bank in Cite, Libya, and the African Monetary Fund to be based in Cameroon. This would replace the IMF and undermine Western economic hegemony in Africa. Number 9. He traveled with a huge bulletproof tent. Gaddafi was reported to have exhibited some symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD if you like. Due to this, he had huge issues moving to the highest floors of buildings. He would usually stop at the 35th step. This, together with the fact that he was born and raised in a nomadic family, were the reasons that he lived in a huge bulletproof tent. He took his tent everywhere, even in the States, and used it for meetings, photo shoots, and everything else he might have needed. He always traveled with his chefs, bodyguards, state officials, and all the furniture that he needed. He even once camped his tent on Donald Trump's property and gave himself what you would only refer to as a homely feeling. Number eight, he had a plastic surgery done without anesthetics. Gaddafi was once thought to be a very handsome man. Looking at his pictures when he was young would really make you wonder how it all changed and why. As the years went by, his looks changed dramatically. Everyone started to ask questions and sure enough, he got some nip and tuck to his face. As his former doctor says, he did it without any anesthetic. His mission was to make Gaddafi look younger using only local anesthesia because he wanted to be awake and conscious during the whole procedure which was conducted in a bunker. He was so calm during the surgery that he ordered hamburgers and ate them halfway through. Number 7. Free 5,000 USD for newborn babies. When a Libyan woman gave birth, she was given 5,000 US dollars for herself and her child. This was to ensure a steady growth of the Libyan population, which was standing at 6.5 million at the time of his death. Number 6. Hired Beyonce for a private party. According to a document obtained by Wikileaks, several pop stars, including Mariah Carey, Beyoncé, Asha, and Lionel Richie, took lucrative gigs performing for Gaddafi and his family in private parties. Beyoncé was reportedly paid two million U.S. dollars to perform on a New Year's party, and Mariah Carey was paid one million U.S. dollars to sing four songs. Number five: Electricity, education, and homes were free. Gaddafi significantly raised the standard for living for the Libyans 
under his rule per capita income in the country rose to more than 11,000 US dollars, the fifth highest in Africa. In his green book, Gaddafi states that a home is a basic human right, and true to his word, all Libyans had home for free. He even went ahead as to promise that his parents would not get a house until everyone in Libya had one. Gaddafi also ensured education on all levels was free in Libya. Before him, only 25% of Libyans were literate. At the time of his death, the figure stood at 83%. Furthermore, if after graduation a Libyan was unable to get employment, the state would pay the average salary of the profession as if he or she was employed until they got a job. Electricity too was free during Gaddafi's tenure, meaning absolutely no electricity bills. Number four, hospitals and medicine was free of charge. Not only did he improve standards of living, Gaddafi's Libya also boasts one of the best healthcare services in the Middle East and Africa. All hospitals and medicines were free of charge and any Libyan would be flown out of the country for free if need arose. Libya's oil fortune had allowed him to create a social system in his country where everybody would benefit from their land's riches to enjoy modern infrastructure and top-notch technology in medicine. Number 3. He ensured free farming startup. Due to the desert surrounding Libya, Gaddafi executed the largest irrigation project in the world. The man-made river was designed so water could be available to all Libyans. The project solely founded by his government is described as the eighth wonder of the world. As unbelievable as it may sound, any Libyan who wanted to start a farming career would receive land, a farming house, equipment, seeds and livestock to kickstart their farm, all for free. Number 2. Introduction of a single African currency before his death, Gaddafi had a plan to create a new African Union based on a new African economic system. He had a plan to introduce the gold diner as backing for African currencies so that Africa could become free from the dollar-dominated Western monetary system. This meant rejecting the dollar as payment for Africa's vast natural resources, especially oil and minerals. As a first step, he offered this lucrative and very beneficial alternative to other Muslim African states, but leaving it open for any other African countries to join. Number one, he was the first African leader to invest state funds into the vision of Pan-Africanism. The term United States of Africa was mentioned first by Marcus Garvey in his poem Hail, United States of Africa in 1924. Gavi's idea and formation systems deeply influenced former African leaders and led to the rebirth of the African Union. Gaddafi had gradually embraced Pan-Africanism and developed a United States of Africa agenda like Nkrumah's. In February 2009, upon being elected chairman of the 53-nation African Union in Ethiopia, Gaddafi told the assembled African leaders, and I quote, my I shall continue to insist that our sovereign countries uh, work to achieve the United States of Africa, end of quote. He proposed a single African military force and a single passport for Africans to move freely around the continent. He went ahead and invested state funds into this vision. So there you have the 10 things you never knew about Gaddafi. Do you think Gaddafi deserved his fate? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe, like and share with your friends.